we insert an arterial line, which is a thin tube, into an artery to continuously monitor a patient's blood pressure and to easily take blood samples for testing. This is especially important for patients who are very sick or need close monitoring of their blood gases. Before we begin, it's crucial to assess the blood flow to the patient's hand. We do this by feeling the radial pulse, which is located on the thumb side of the wrist, between the wrist bone and a tendon. To ensure there's good collateral circulation, meaning that if one artery is blocked, another can still supply blood, we perform an Allen's test, or a modified Allen's test. First, we press down on both the radial and ulnar arteries, which are the two main arteries supplying blood to the hand. While pressing, we ask the patient to clench their fist tightly. Then, we release the pressure on the ulnar artery. If blood flow is good, the hand should regain its normal color within five seconds. If it takes longer, it suggests that the ulnar artery might not be providing enough blood, and we might need to choose a different artery for the arterial line. We repeat the test, this time releasing pressure on the radial artery, to assess its contribution to blood flow. There are certain conditions where we shouldn't insert an arterial line. These include coagulopathy, which is a blood clotting disorder that increases the risk of bleeding, advanced atherosclerosis, or hardening of the arteries, which can make it difficult to insert the line and increase the risk of damaging the artery. Raynaud's phenomenon, a condition causing reduced blood flow to the fingers and toes, and thromboangiitis obliterans, also known as Berger's disease, an inflammation of blood vessels that restricts blood flow. We need to use sterile equipment to prevent infection. This includes sterile cleaning solutions like chlorhexidine, a catheter over needle assembly or a catheter over wire assembly, 1% lidocaine for numbing the insertion site, a small 25 gauge needle and syringe for the lidocaine, a scalpel or a larger bore needle to make a small skin nick, suture material, and a needle holder to secure the catheter, and a wrist board or rolled gauze to keep the wrist in a stable position. Before we start, we position the patient's wrist in dorsiflexion, which means bending it upward to make the radial artery easier to access. We use a wrist board or rolled up gauze to support the wrist and secure it with tape. After thoroughly cleaning and draping the area with sterile materials, we inject a small amount of lidocaine under the skin to numb the insertion site, creating a small wheel. For the over-the-wire technique, we insert the catheter needle assembly into the artery at a 30 to 45 degree angle. When we see blood flowing back into the catheter, we advance the catheter slightly and remove the needle. Then, we insert a thin, flexible wire through the catheter, pull the catheter back slightly until we see pulsatile blood flow, advance the wire into the artery, and then advance the catheter over the wire. We apply pressure on the artery distal to the catheter to minimize blood loss, remove the wire, and connect the catheter to the blood pressure monitoring system. For the over-the-needle technique, we insert the catheter needle assembly at a similar 30 to 45 degree angle. After seeing blood return, we advance the needle slightly further to ensure it's fully inside the artery. Then, we lower the angle to 10 to 15 degrees and advance the catheter into the artery. We apply pressure on the artery proximal to the catheter to minimize blood loss, remove the needle, and connect the catheter to the monitoring system. Regardless of the technique used, it's essential to securely suture the catheter in place to prevent it from moving or coming out. We use non-absorbable suture material, such as silk or nylon, and apply a clear, sterile dressing over the insertion site. After inserting the arterial line, we check the blood flow to the hand again by assessing capillary refill, temperature, and sensation. We continue to monitor the blood flow regularly while the line is in place. We can encounter some common problems during the procedure. If we don't get blood return with the over-the-needle technique, we can switch to the over-the-wire technique. If the catheter won't advance smoothly, it might be because the needle tip is inside the artery, but the catheter tip is still outside. 
We can fix this by advancing the needle slightly further. If the catheter gets stuck on the skin, we can make a small skin nick with a scalpel or a larger bore needle before inserting the catheter. And if the artery goes into spasm after multiple attempts, we should stop and choose a different insertion site. And there you have it, a full step-by-step -step guide on arterial line placement. For full course on critical care skills, we have created a dedicated course on our website. Please check here, just click on it. Whether it's decoding an ECG, spotting a tricky MI, or just leveling up your medical game, understanding the finer details can make all the difference. If you want more deep dives like this, check out ecgkid.com for exclusive breakdowns, case studies, and resources tailored for healthcare pros like you. And hey, if you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Stay sharp, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next episode.